God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Can you give the Lord some praise for what He has done in this house this morning? For this being God. God is so good. He is so good. We thank God for what He's doing. We thank God for what He's done. And we know that God ain't done yet. He's still working. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, if you got the swords with you, get them out and let's turn, if you will, to 2 Timothy chapter number 3. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. Got a few places I'm going to go, and I know I probably will not get through much of it today. But with the help of the Holy Ghost, we'll get through what He wants to get through. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. No, that's right. We ain't going to put no time limit on the Lord. We understand if you got to go, there's the door. We understand that. But uh, for those of you, I believe you will be blessed if you're able to stay and receive the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter number 3. Very, very uh, familiar passage of Scripture. I'm sure you've heard it many times, but we're going to read it anyways. Uh, Second Timothy 3, starting verse 1. If you found the place... Would you stand if you're able for the reading of God's word? And this is what it says. Second Timothy 3 verse 1. But know this that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiven, slanderers without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, Traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, or its power, and from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep in a household and make captives of gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jambres resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt mind, disapproved concerning the faith, but they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifest to all as theirs also was. Now, I want you to look over, if you will, 2 Timothy chapter number 2. I believe it's the next one we'll go to. No, 2 Corinthians 2, verse 11. 2 Corinthians 2, verse 11. Second Corinthians 2, verse 11. I'm going to just read it to you for the sake of time. It says, Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Can somebody look at your neighbor and let them know I'm not ignorant of what the devil's doing? Oh, come on now. Some of you didn't sound like you said anything, are you? Let's let them know. We're not ignorant of what the devil's doing. We know what he's doing. And the enemy has overplayed his hand. The enemy is trying way too hard, Brother Randall. He is showing out all he can right now. But back to 2 Timothy 2, if you held your place. 2 Timothy 2 now, verses 3 and 4. 2 Timothy 2, and then I'll let you be seated. Verses 3 and 4. 2 Timothy 2, verses 3 and 4, says these words. You, that means you, the one holding the Bible, the one reading the Bible. You, therefore, must endure hardship as a good what? Soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare. Do you understand? Every one of us in this room is engaged in warfare right now. We are in a war. Whether you see it or not, we are at war. I don't know how you can't see it. We are at war with hell. We are at war with the kingdom of 
darkness. We are at war with Satan and his enemy. And we will overcome. Praise the Lord. And the Bible said no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Hallelujah. Do you want to know who enlisted you as a soldier? Praise the Lord. The Holy Ghost. When he pulled you down, hallelujah, to the recruitment station, which is the altar of God, he lifted you up when you said, here we are, Lord. I want to be born again. And you was made to be in the army of the Lord. And we have a great commander in chief. Uh, praise God, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, who rides on a white horse. Uh, praise God, the one true white horse. Uh, there's two white horses. Be careful. There's two, but we'll talk about it. But praise God, we have an awesome commander in chief. But the Bible said, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. I tried to preach a message this morning that was going to be fancy and, and that would, would, would be alright but God said no, you're going to preach this message. I tried and God said no, this is the one you're going to preach. So I've got to obey the Lord. So I'm going to pray and preach the message God told me to preach. Father, in Jesus' name, I know you have orchestrated the events that have been going on here today. And Father, I thank you for what you have done. Lord, I thank you for what you are about to do. God, anoint this word. Lord, this is the bread of life that we have opened up. Lord, just as you have showed up and showed out now in before the reading of the word, I pray show out even more through the reading of the word. I pray as we read the word and preach the word, God, that the word would go out and it will land on good soil and it will begin to take root in the hearts and lives of our brothers and sisters in this assembly. And God, that it will begin to blossom and it will begin to do a work in their life that will forever change everything that the enemy tries to throw their way. We know, God, you are doing a work. Thank you for enlisting us. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you, God, for favoring us. We give you all the praise. Cover us now by your blood. Anoint us with the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Wouldn't you give the Lord a praise one more time? Well, I come this morning to tell you a couple things. Because if you have not seen what is going on in our world today, then you've got to be blind and we need to come and pray that God will open your eyes. The political climate that we are in right now with the failed assassination attempt on President Trump's life. I did say President Trump. The failed assassination attempt and people laughing about it and talking about how bad that uh, they wish that it would, his brains would have been, I'm trying to be careful, I know there's children in here, but I'm being real with you because they're going to hear worse than this outside of church. How they had wished that his brains would have been splattered and, and how people are lifting this stuff up. And all the way till the Olympics, how they're mocking the Last Supper and, and Jesus with a bunch of drag queens. And now they want to tell you that that's not what it was. And, and all kinds of junk and evil. It's just every day it is something else. Then they ride out with a white horse or a pale horse. And, and everything that seems to be happening in our world today is mocking Jesus Christ and his church. Now, I don't know about you, but I, 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 it gets frustrating. Amen? It, it gets frustrating. And, and then the Lord began to work with me and began to show me this scripture and began to talk to me and I, I said Lord I hear what you're saying and, and Lord you, you're really getting on to me and, and because these things will begin to take over your mind and they will begin has anybody felt any anger lately? Yeah. 
Let's be honest. Have you felt anger lately about the things that was going on in our world? I understand. I have too. I've been mad about it. I have actually not slept in nights because it, I don't know if that's what it is. It's, just, it's warfare. Spiritual warfare. Been up for nights. We was talking about it the other day. And, and just praying and thinking, man, I don't understand. I ain't never had no problem sleeping. And I've always been able to sleep good. And, and now it's just like, my gosh, what in the world is going on? And, and I know what it is. It's spiritual warfare. And the further we get along in this last hour, first uh, Timothy chapter 4. You don't have to turn there, but you can if you'd like to. 1 Timothy 4 says, Now the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. i got to come and tell you this morning that there is deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons everywhere you look, on every corner. There's church houses down the road. I'm not calling any names. Church houses that is not uh, in California anymore. They're right here in Alabama. Oh, they, they're broadcasting it where they are preaching with deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. They're not preaching with the Holy Ghost in the Bible anymore. They're preaching an adulterated gospel. They're preaching a sugar-coated gospel. They're not even taking the Word of God with them. They're preaching whatever they feel good that will tickle your ears. I'm going to tell you something. If you can take that if you want to, but you want to know what that's going to do, it's going to send that preacher and all that congregation straight to the pits of hell because they've rejected the Word of God. God and the truth of the gospel of Jesus. i got to take you one more place to the Bible in 2 Thessalonians. i got a few places to go today, but 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. This is something that we've, we've studied it before, but this is something that's fairly, it's, it's not read very often, but it's talking about in the last days, right before the coming of the Lord. 2 Thessalonians 2. And if you ain't, you need to read that whole chapter. But I'm just going to read the last part because I don't have time to read all of it. But I'm just going to read down here in verse number 10. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 10. The Bible said, And with all of unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. Oh, yeah. That they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but they had pleasure in unrighteousness. Did you hear that? It said that these people would not receive the love of the truth. What is that talking about, Brother Chad? Well, I'm glad you asked. This word is truth. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. So they would not receive Jesus, who is the word. They would not receive the word. They would not receive Jesus. And there's people today in this hour. Y'all are an awesome. Listen. And I... I, I I, don't, I can't say this without prejudice, I guess, but y'all, I don't want to go nowhere else to preach. Amen. I, I kid you not. I have been in other places preaching as of recently. And it is so hard. I'm like, man, I can't wait to get back to Prospect. My goodness. You will tell people and preach your guts out and try your best, and people will just sit there and just never be moved and you're like what is wrong do you not feel the Holy Ghost do you not have God moving in you what in the world is going on and the Bible said that in the last days there's going to be more and more and more that's going to be being deceived by seducing spirits and doctrines of devils and the Bible said that the day of the Lord shall not come until there's a great falling away comes first. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
We're seeing that falling away. It's happening. The falling away is been happening. We're seeing people falling out of church left and right. They're going after the other way. That's called apostasy. Oh, but I got some good gospel news this morning. Apostasy works both ways. Not only will people fall out of church and go for the world, but people are going to fall out of the world and come for God. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and prophesy. Those devil worshipers, they're going to lay down the Ouija boards and pick up the Bible. Hallelujah. To the Lamb of God. They're going to lay down their, their, their rocks and their crystals and their stones and their psychic tarot cards. And they're going to begin to pick up a Bible and begin to pray and seek the face of God. They're going to come in here looking not like we do. And that's okay because we don't want everybody to look like us. We don't want everybody to dress like us. And look, this place would be boring. If everybody looked like you and talked like you and dressed like you, praise God. God don't look at the outward appearance. He looks at the heart. Praise the Lord. And so there's a great falling away that's happening. And so in this country that we're in right now, it forewarned us that in the last days it was going to go worse and worse. And so now we're seeing our celebrities. I told you this last week. Our celebrities are talking about, and I hate even saying this, but I've got to, to make you aware. Come on. These celebrities that are winning awards after awards are saying that they take the pages of the Holy Bible and they use it to stop up their menstrual cycle. These people in, in celebrities who they are lifting up and giving them Grammy Awards, they are lifting them up. And these people are the ones saying that life begins when the church ends. They are lifting these folks up and children are idolizing these people and they don't even know what these folks are saying. And there's a falling away because in the, the, the lyrics, they're hiding these words. Oh, people don't talk about it. People don't want to talk about it. It may sound good. Oh, it's got a good beat, Brother Chad. You are listening to it. No, I don't care what the beat is. If it's not lifting Jesus' name up, you need to turn that junk off and put it out of your car, out of your house, get it out of your system. It's killing you and sending your babies to hell. What else do you need to understand? Get it out in Jesus' name. Get it out. We're letting our babies die and go to hell because they're being deceived by these devil worshipers. Snoop Dogg walking around at the Olympics with a goat head hanging around his neck. But oh, it's so good to drop it like it's hot. Come on. Oh, everybody just lifts him up because he, he's so cool. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. I tell you who's cool. The one who told it across of Calvary's Hill. Yeah. The one who bled and died for you. The one who lived his life for you. The one who paid everything that you can live. The one who rose from the grave. That's the one that's cool. That's the one we had taught. But it's just as Sonny was saying yesterday. They were mocking Jesus back then. They're still mocking him today. No other religion. Mohammed don't get mocked. That's right. Yeah, they'll be dead in no time. They'd mock Mohammed. And Mohammed is dead. And his ashes, his body is still in the ground. All of those people who they don't mess with, they, they're dead and still in their tombs. But why do they single Jesus out? Because there's power. Power. Wonder-working power through the blood of the Lamb. I'm going to tell you what happened over 2,000 years ago on a blood-stained hill called Golgotha. Glory to God, when the blood comes down, it hit the earth, and it forever changed the history.
history of the world. Times was changed. People was changed. A new breed of people was born and they began to be raised up. The Bible said Jesus was the firstborn among many brethren. What does that mean? It means that the starting when Jesus overcome. It means that he began to raise up a new group of people. His army began when Christ overcome death. When he overcome hell. When he overcome the grave. When he overcome by the resurrection. Hallelujah. When the church was birthed on the day of Pentecost and the fire come down, the church was born. The army went out multiplying. The army went out in the power and demonstration, not in words and in deeds alone. You see, here's what we must understand. There, there, is, there is a real and then there is a pseudotype. What's a pseudotype? A pseudotype is an imitation. A pseudotype is a, a, a fake. It's not the real thing. It may look like the real thing. It may talk like the real thing. But it's false. It's fake. So there's the real and then there's the fake. And, and that's what we're having a hard time distinguishing in this last hour now. But I believe that God is shaking the world right now. I believe that God is shaking this earth right now. And we are finally, we are going to be able to see the difference between the real and the fake. Between the religious and the righteous. Between those who love Him with their whole heart are those who just love Him with their mouth. Those who will serve Him to the day they die are those that will just serve Him on Sunday. Those that say, I'll follow you all the way, Lord. Whatever you say are those that will actually put it to action and say, let's go, Lord. I'm all in. I'm following you. Listen, there's a difference happening right now. The Bible said, yet once more, I'm going to shake. Shake it, sir. Not the earth only, but the heavens also. And what can be shaken will remain. But everything that can be shaken. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. There's some shaking that's happened. And there's some shakings about to happen. You must understand. Our country is on the brink of, of, of uncertainty right now. And depending on what goes on, either way, it's still going to be upheaval. I'm not trying to speak this into existence. I'm just speaking the truth to you this morning. It's coming. And we must do something. This is what the Lord spoke to me this week as I was studying the scripture. As all this stuff was happening, he said these words in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. He said, you therefore. And when he spoke this, I was like, Lord, okay, I hear you. He said, you must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. I come this morning to tell you that the enemy has got so much stuff working right now. I told you a moment ago, the devil has overplayed his hand. Sonia, when me and you first got together, I probably looked like a, a crazy puppy that was just trying his best to, to get some food. I was trying everything I could to get her to notice me. I was trying everything I could to get her to show me attention. It didn't take much. I just put that cornbread in my back pocket and she chased me all over the place. Lord, I'm sorry about that. But have you ever noticed how some people can overplay their hand? They can be so, so overwhelming that it's just like, this person's trying too hard. 
It's making me just get mad at them now. This part, I know they mean well and all. Come on, bro. Yeah. But I'm getting mad now. It's starting to get under my skin. starting to aggravate me now. And, and this is the way that the Lord showed it to me. The enemy has been trying to get us to know this hill. The enemy's been throwing attack. These things are away, trying to get our minds unfocused and hindered and our minds off of the Savior of the world. We've got a warfare that's going on and everything is being thrown our way. We can't get over one thing before something else happens. Assassination attempt. The, 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 this one over here comes. The, the, the Olympic ceremony. It's one thing after another, after another, after another. The white horse, the bell, and whatever. It's coming our way. And the Bible said that all all these things are going to take place. But be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. I'm going to tell you something. God sees all. What is done in secret shall be brought to light. And he said no one, no one should be entangled who is a soldier for Jesus. Right. What I've come to tell you this morning is quit letting this stuff get you distracted from what's really taking place. All this is smoke screens. Hear me. Hear me now. All this is Luciferian. What is that? Lucifer. This is all Luciferian. That's all politics is. It's not election, it's selection. Remember I told you a while ago, anxiety, worry about nothing, but pray about everything? It's what we do. Anxiety and faith cannot live in the same body. I want you all to say that with me. Anxiety and faith cannot live in the same body. It cannot. It can't. Salt water and fresh water cannot live in the same tank. Neither can anxiety and faith. It will not. It don't coincide. That's just like the Holy Ghost and demons are not going well in the same body. I've had some preacher tell me that uh, a child of God who's born again could be demon possessed. No, he can't. They have a demon attached to his life and, and, and trying to depress him and oppress him, but he's not inside that body because the Holy Ghost ain't going to share a body with no demon. The Holy Ghost is going to take his foot and kick that dead alive in the name of Jesus. That's not to say now demons can't come at you, but if you're covered by the blood, you're good. You're covered. God has got you. Praise God. But we said, be not entangled. This word right here, listen to it. It said, we're going to go through hardship. Well, I'm telling you, anger, anger is corrosive to your faith. It's corrosive. Brother JT, that old Toyota I got over there, when I popped the hood on that thing, if you look at the battery, I want to man, it's just corroded over. Yeah, I'm talking about it's just corroded over. It's nasty looking. I need a Coca Cola to pour on it. Yeah. Y'all ever seen that? Yeah. Coca Cola, it's got so much acid in it. I don't know why they don't drink Coca Cola after watching that clean the battery. Imagine what that's doing to your stomach. It'll clean the battery good. But fear and anxiety and anger, political anger, it's not righteous. It's not righteous. It's, it's the manifestation of our insecurity and our lack of faith in Jesus and our pride. It's frustration. I promise you, I'm telling you, I know what's frustrating. And I've had to repent because I get angry. But the brother spoke that to me the other day and he stepped on my toes and I said, ouch. I couldn't say amen, I had to say ouch. He said, your political anger. He was speaking to somebody else, but it spoke directly to me. It hit me right between the eyes. 
and your political anger. It's not righteous. <laughs> wow. But it's manifestation of your insecurity. Mm. Your lack of faith in Jesus. Come on, bro. And your pride. And I got to thinking about that. I was like, wow. You know what? That's a lot of truth in that. Because I know who my God is. I know who my God is. And I got faith that God, in the Bible, He took care of things. Let me tell you, He used Nebuchadnezzar, and He can use anybody. He used wicked kings and good kings. And I know He's going to use whoever. But I believe we're going to stand up and do our part. That don't mean that we're not to do what we're supposed to do. We must all pray and vote. That don't mean sit back and do nothing. We must do our part. But what I'm telling you is don't let the weight of all these commercials and the weight of this junk that they're pushing down your throats, don't let it get you entangled in it and cause you to become bitter and angry and, and get your eyes off of what is really going on. Quit letting the noise of the world drown out the voice of God in your life. Wow. He said no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. That he may please him who enlist him as a soldier. I want to be pleasing to God, don't you? And I don't think it's pleasing to God after I sat and thought about that. I don't think it's pleasing to God when he looks down and sees his children who, who proclaims that we have faith in him. Then we say, my goodness, I, just, I don't know why all this stuff, it just keeps coming and they just keep pushing us down. This, this. I don't think God's pleased. When we say, you know what? We're, we're, just, we're just country's doomed. I've said it, listen, I had to repent. I just told you, I'm the first one to say I had to repent. Because as long as God is still on the throne, yes. this country is not doomed. Yes. We may have idiots in the White House, yes. but God is still on the throne. Yes. And I'm praying and I'm believing that all this is going to change. Come November, praise God, we're going to do what we come to do. And the church is going to show up and we're going to vote and we're going to do what we're supposed to do. Amen. And we're going to go out. And if you won't change, you've got to be the change. Do different. Be different. But don't let their... See, they want you to believe lies. They want you to believe lies and deception. That's how the enemy has worked since day one. Deception. He'll twist the words. And that's what the enemy does. That's what a lot of times the left does. They'll twist words. And anytime they get asked on about something... They'll never answer the question. They'll always twist it around and point it back to you. Alright, let me get off of that now. It's the truth though. But I want to be pleasing to God. I don't care what man says about me. I might have a lot of people get mad at me for preaching this message, but I don't care. It don't matter. You can unfollow us. You can unfriend us. Whatever. I'm going to follow God. And it don't matter what man does to me. I'm not worried about what, what can man do. Praise God. I'm not worried about man. I'm worried about one. That's Jesus. Praise God. What's the next verse? 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5 verses 8 through 10. Let me flip right over there in just a minute. 1 Peter 5 verses 8 through 10. This is what the scripture says. 1 Peter 5, 8 through 10. Praise God. It says these words, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Resist him. Somebody say that with me. Resist him. Steadfast in the faith knowing that the same sufferings that are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Verse 10. But may the God of all grace, who called us to His eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect and establish and strengthen and settle you. 
I love what it says. Number one, he said, be sober. Be sober-minded. What does that mean? Be sober-minded. Well, it used to, before I became a Christian, before God delivered me, I wasn't sober-minded. My mind was clouded up because I was putting things in my mind. I was allowing other things, and I was allowing chemicals, and, and I was allowing uh, alcohol and different things to cloud up my mind. But you don't have to take drugs and alcohol to, to be unsober. You can allow media and news, and you can allow words to cloud up your mind, and you not be sober. You may not be sober-minded. Because you have allowed lies and deception to come in, now you are now not sober. You are being clouded. Your mind is being clouded up. You are now being tangled up. Like, you know, spider's web. You want to know what that internet's good for? It's a web. But oh, what a web it weaves if you're not careful. It's just Brother Dave Nick said one time before, he said it's, it's like the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It can be used for good and it can be used for evil. Be careful what you look up. Be careful what you allow into your body, into your mind, into your heart. Behold. And so, what did it say? It said, be sober. Be, be clear-minded. Don't let stuff cloud your mind up. And just like Second Timothy said, don't let it entangle you. Is everybody following me okay? Yeah. Don't be entangled with this mess. I know how mad it makes you. But this is where we got to be humble and timid. Temperate is the word, not timid. Temperate. What does temperate mean? It means not so quick to get angry. Do you remember what our Lord said as He hung on the cross and they nailed the nails in His hands and His feet? Man, I would have been like, Lord, or I would have been like, God, turn him into a stone or something. But Jesus didn't. He said, Lord, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. How? How? He was so tender, so graceful. And the same grace, the Bible tells us that we've got to learn to become that way so that these people, that they too may be able to find repentance. Because these people, listen y'all, we're not fighting flesh and blood. These people are under delusion. But they're still souls. Those people that was at that table the other day at the Olympics, every one of them can be brought out of that mess. Can be brought out. They're not lost and on their way to heaven. The only one person is doomed to hell and his name is Satan. But everybody else, if there's breath in their body, I don't care if they blaspheme. The Bible says if you blaspheme Jesus, if you blaspheme God, you can still be saved. As long as you ain't blaspheme the Holy Ghost. And they ain't done that or they be dead. Praise God. But if you bless, and the Bible says you can still be saved. You can still be forgiven. So even though it angers us, we must learn to humble ourselves and be temperate. See, first Peter says, be sober, be vigilant, watchful, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion. See, that's the difference. Our God is a lion. But the devil walks about like a lion. He's a pseudo type. Our God roars like a lion and the devil mouths like a kitty cat. Whoa, praise God. I said the devil, he just tries to be what God is, but he ain't able to be what God is. All he does is go around roaring with a little bit of roar and everybody gives him to him because they become entangled in the well that he weaves. They, he throws all this stuff out there and begins to make you think and the whole world think that Ed, this whole world is dying in order to hell. All things are so bad. America's doomed. We're, we're, we're losing it. We're losing it. But this is what the Lord spoke into my spirit. As soon as I've seen all that, and I don't know where it come from, all I know is I felt this ever since I seen that the other day, and I told Sonny about it. You know what? Our revenge 
is revival. Our revenge is revival. When we come to church, let's bring the light and let's bring people to Christ and let's let Jesus shine and make the devil mad that he ever tried to get our minds clouded up. How did he ever try to mess with America? Listen, we are Americans, amen? We're Americans. But most of all, we are kingdom citizens. Hallelujah. And that means we're dangerous. We've got the God of angel armies on our side. Praise God. And so he's got something that he needs to fear. Number one, he can't come against the blood. He's already defeated. He can't come against the blood. So he goes around like a roaring lion. God's already said, resist him. The very next verse, number nine. Resist him. Do y'all know what that means? Uh, I know it's raining. You're getting sleepy. I'm going to pause right here. Everybody wakes up. We'll stay all day. Bad. Hallelujah. You know what that means? It means that you have got to quit letting the devil get in your mind. Resist him. Quit letting this world get in your mind and mess with your mind. Quit letting the world weigh you down and burden you down. Jesus said, cast all your cares on me. Lay aside every weight and every sin that does so easily beset you that you are able to run this race. Resist the enemy. Don't let him speak lies to you. Don't let him come as he did to Eve. Stand up in the name of Jesus and say, Go. Get under my feet and stay there. You don't belong in my presence. You are lost and done. You had your shot and you blew it. You rejected God and you tried to overthrow him. And now there's a day coming. While I'm praising God around this throne, you're going to be burning in the lake of fire. So don't come to me and try to get me to go there with you. Because I'm not going. I'm going to my father's house. Resist him. Tell him where to go. You can go back to hell for once you come. But get out of my sight. Get out of my family. Get out of my home. Everything. Resist him. And then step fast in the faith. Step fast in faith. The faith. What does that mean? It means that you are not being, you're not being able to be moved. Whoa, I can preach that for a while, but I don't have time. That means, I'm going to get on these last verse. I've got a million more places to go, but I'm going to quit. This is what it means. Huh? Rooted, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Rooted is good. There's so many Christians. They're on again, off again. They, they're, they're on fire today and tomorrow they're lukewarm. Yeah, iceberg. Yeah. You'll see them praising the Lord today and tomorrow they'll cuss you out. They're not steadfast in the faith. They're, they're movable. The things of this world move them and shape them. But the Bible says, finally, my brother, be you steadfast. Unmovable. That means steadfast means standing. It said of General Stonewall Jackson that in the Civil War, the War of Independence for the South, said that they used to shoot cannons toward General Stonewall Jackson. That's where he got his nickname from. And said as those cannon balls were coming past him, said he would stand there like a stone wall. He was steadfast. And the man was a son of God, a child of God. It is notorious that him and Robert E. Lee, the two greatest generals for the south of the Civil War, it is noted to them that them two men were full of the Holy Ghost and they would kneel down and they would talk to God before every battle. Yeah. Read stories about them. That's not doctored by the education system that wants to tear them apart. Yeah. But those two men of God, they had steadfast faith. They knew, hey, I'm going to stand here because God's got me. God's got me. In your Christian walk, we've got to be steadfast. 
unmovable. Don't let every wind and wave of doctrine move you. Get grounded in the Word. You've got to have your roots in the Word so that you know what you believe. You can't just believe what Brother Chad believes because then you have no roots. You've got to know what you believe. You've got to know and be rooted and grounded in the Word so that when winds and storms come, you, you don't have to call somebody to find out what you believe. You already know. Step fast. See, that's why a lot of Christians are wishy-washy because they don't ever open their Bible. The only time they open their Bible is when they come to church. And the only time they, they hear a sermon is when they come to church. They're not steadfast. The first big storm that comes knocks them over. The first big wind that comes, they're moved about. And they're so easily swayed to do the wrong things. But you know what? The palm tree, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to let you read the last verse. Are you saying it? Okay, I got you. I, the palm tree in Florida. When the storms come, when hurricanes come, 150 mile an hour winds, whatever they are, those palm trees, they things they're, they're so rooted in their ground that they will be bowed all the way over. The top of the tree will be touching the ground. And you'll say that tree's going to snap in half and it's never going to live again. But as soon as that storm leaves, that palm tree, the sun comes out. And as the sun begins to beam down on that palm tree, my God, as the sun begins to shine on that palm tree, immediately that tree begins to raise back up again. Stand it. It comes and it comes and it comes until it's standing straight up and it's rooted. It's not moved at all. It's still standing in the same place it's always stood. It's not moved an inch. It's still standing right where it's always stood. It might have been bowed over. It might have been knocked that back or knocked around, but it's still standing. Exactly. And that may be you this morning. And the enemy may be trying to knock you around and blow you over and push you down and pull up your roots, but as long as you're still standing and rooted in the Word of God, it don't matter what storm comes or what winds come or what doctrine comes or what political system comes or what they do on the Olympics that don't bother you because you know who your God is and we know that this is all theater from the enemy he's trying to do give an illusion it's all theater all this is lining up so that when the man of sin comes the son of perdition that everybody will fall in line and just follow after him. That's the man on the other white horse. That's the false. That's the pseudo type. The man of sin that's coming. My God. So all the things that we're seeing now, that's just getting people scared and in place so that later, when that guy comes, everybody give him. But we know in whom we have believed. We know in the Jesus that we serve. And we know, praise God, that we know, that we know, that we know that who we have entrusted and who we have committed ourselves to, that He is able to keep that which we have committed to Him against that day. It says, resist Him. Be steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. That means we're not just going through this in America. We're not just going through this in America, y'all. This is not just a USA thing. This is a worldwide. This tells us this is a spiritual problem. This is not a Republican or Democrat problem. It's not a donkey or a or, or a elephant problem. Thank you. Sister Riley, thank you, brother. It's not a donkey or an elephant. Praise God. It's not about that. It's about you surrendering to the Lamb of God. 
and letting the line of the tribe of Judah come down and reign in your life. The last verse says, but may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. He said, you have been called to an eternal glory. This is not it, y'all. I know this is amazing what God is doing right here, but this is not it. This is not it. I love having what God done here this morning. Oh, my goodness. You cannot, I don't, you can't find this anywhere else. In a club, in, a, in nothing else. God only shows up for the people who are hungry for it. And I'm going to tell you something. This seal don't compare to what is to come. To an eternal glory. And the Bible says that God's called us to. There's a place we're going. There's a place where we're going to get to. Praise God. Where Jesus has called us. But it says, after you have suffered a while. But it's in that suffering. It's in this mess that we're going through right now. That God is perfecting you. God is establishing you. God is strengthening you. And God is settling you. I'm going to say that again. He's perfecting you, establishing you, strengthening you, and settling you. I read it and I got some more places to go, but not today. I hear the Lord saying, that's it. Son, come stand with me, please. Would you stand all over the house? I read this morning in Scripture where the Bible says that if we if we live with Christ I believe it's in 2 Timothy as well we'll get there next week that we must die with Him and if we die with Him then we resurrect with Him oh my God anyways what the scripture was saying was was as we're living in Christ right now there's many things that's going to come our way many troubles many trials, many persecutions. And there's going to be many people that's going to turn their backs on you and give up on you and everything else. But there's one that never will. There's one that never will. And there's going to be times where it's be easy to just have anxiety and just all that stuff. It'd be easy to just throw in the towel and just quit. But it says we got to endure to the end. And it says if we're faithful in this season that we're going through, what God is sending our way is building us. As Christ was killed, as Christ died, this is killing our flesh. Ooh. Somebody here, you want to know why you're going through troubles? It's to kill our flesh. It's to humble us down and to show the glory of God. All the things that we're going through is to show the glory of God, but it is to humble us to give us a lesson as Christ died, but the resurrection is coming yeah. next. As Christ died, we must die with Him. But then the resurrection comes. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. We can't have a resurrection without death. Amen. So we must go through that before we can get to the resurrection. So if you're going through it, just know your resurrection's coming. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise God. Father, I thank you for your word today. And I pray, help all of us in this room. Lord, anybody watching my video, I know, God, everything in our world is so chaotic. Lord, it's so evil. And Lord, I know it's frustrating. And, and Lord, God, is so messed up, it seems, at times. But Lord, we know that people, Lord, that they are they're still, they can still come and give their lives to you. God, even people that mock you and spit in your face. Lord, you still love them. And Lord, you want them to come be in heaven with you. So Father, we, we pray, help us, Lord God, to, to not be angry. And, and Lord, not to show our temper and to fight and cause quarrels and, and to be bitter and to get all caught up in what's going on in our world. But Lord, help us to know we're in spiritual warfare. And help us to suit up with the armor 
and always be ready as we keep our eyes on Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you will help us, Lord, to just understand the times that we're in. And Lord, that it is the last hour. And your word says that, that the love of many will grow cold, and that scoffers are going to come, and that, that evil men will grow worse and worse. Father, I pray as they do so, I pray let the church grow more and more. Let our light shine more and more. As the darkness grows, let your light shine brighter. That we can reach the lost. Lord, let that fall away, God. Let it happen in the world as well. Lord God, we stand on your word. Help us to remain faithful. Help us to be the remnant, the true. The ones who are not just playing this, but the ones who live it. We love you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. And we give you all glory. If anybody don't know you, God, I call them forward right now. To just believe in their heart and pray this prayer. Father, I know that I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I believe that you come and live for me and died for me. And I believe that you rose for me. And I want to live for you. From this day forward, would you come into my life and be my Savior? Forgive me of my sins and write my name down in your Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Help me from this day on to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. You pray that?